this is a Redmi Note 11 and I regret buying this phone. The fact that the Redmi Note 11 S does exist makes this phone an almost useless device and guys, I think I might need a refund. The only way this video is going to make sense to you guys is if you watch till the end of this video. And so without taking much of your time, you guys finish. Yo guys, let's get started. I love me my Redmi devices no doubt. In fact, that's the reason I have lots of those devices right here. Just as with most of these devices, with this one, you get the SIM ejector, the user guide, the user manual, a silicone case, a 33 watt fast charger, and a USB-C connector. The design is, well, pretty much standard and something you wouldn't think a lot about on this device. You have a plastic wear with the volume rocker and power button to the right side. The power button also doubles as a fingerprint scanner on the smartphone. While the left side gives you the dual SIM tray with a dedicated micro SD card slot for memory expansion, the top side gives you the audio jack, a top firing speaker, an IR blaster, and the secondary microphone. And the bottom side gives you a mouthpiece opening, USB-C port, and a down firing speaker. The only reason this smartphone will feel so comfortable to hold will be as a result of the form factor. You have a 6.43 inch display here, and this is actually small compared to other smartphones on the market right now. And to make the smartphone more comfortable to hold, you can throw on this plastic TPU case to get that comfortable feel by holding this boxy smartphone. It's quite difficult to put on. So there are currently three colors available for the Redmi Note 11 here, which are the graphite gray, the pearl white, and the star blue, which I have here. Of course, Redmi gives us a dual stereo speaker configuration on here, but the truth is, the down firing speaker does the bulk of the job, while the top speaker actually does sound tiny, but that complements the audio you get from the down firing speaker though. With a 6.43 inch AMOLED panel, 90Hz refresh rate, 1080p resolution and up to 1000 nits in brightness, this might be the best part about this here as a note from Redmi. You get yourself fluid animation while scrolling and this also aids in the gameplay from the smartphone. And you can also use the smartphone conveniently outdoors all thanks to the high peak brightness when the need arises. You should expect Android 11 on the Redmi 11, I'm a rap god from heaven, blow your mind like 911. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> MIUI 13 is also on here and of course you have those bloatware apps which are pretty much removable from the smartphone and basically a smooth experience as far as the software is concerned with this device. You get the Snapdragon 680 chipset or processor on here with a memory configuration starting at 4 gigs, 64 gigs to 6 gigs, 128 gigs, which I have. Performance isn't anything extraordinary. You definitely can throw your titles, your heavy titles like PUBG, Call of Duty on the smartphone and have a decent gameplay with the Redmi Note 11. Now, even though you might not expect the best graphic representation of the games, it sure does handle your business. Here's a Geekbench score for the Redmi Note 11. 50 megapixel main lens and 8 megapixel ultra wide, 2 megapixel for both the depth and the macro lenses. I actually do have an issue or two with this camera. They are average at best and when it comes to the white balance, I do not think this is an accurate representation of what you'd see with your eyes. I know with good lighting, you get some good photos with this smartphone, but then the key word is good lighting. Low light photos are not sharp, as with other smartphones you might have tested, but the night mode doesn't even have a lot to contribute in making the night photos on the smartphone any better. The photos from the front cameras look like they lack saturation and a little bit too plasticky, like a beauty filter was thrown on here. And generally, I would say the photos are average at best from the front-facing camera. Videos can be recorded at up to 1080p max resolution on the smartphone with no form of stabilization on here, and the quality is even worse than what you get from the photos. So I would say generally this is a better photo camera than it does video from the smartphone. What do you guys think about the videos and the photos you get from the smartphone as seen on the screen right now? Let me know your thoughts about this camera, if you love them or you hate them in the comment section below. And while you're at that, hit on that subscribe button as I'd really appreciate that. A 5000 mAh battery with a 33 watts fast charger is what you get for this device and it actually juices up this device from 0 to 100 in about an hour. And also I noticed that the processor on here is quite efficient in terms of handling the power issues. A great and solid battery life is what you get with this smartphone. So I got my unit here for 127,000 Naira, roughly $250. And all I can say is that I do not think this is actually a hit from Redmi this year. It might be a miss. 
I'm talking about this smartphone as someone who has owned every Note device from the Note 7 series. Redmi did offer us more value in the past than what we have on here this year. And of course, there's good display, good battery life, um, average processing or efficient processing rather. This smartphone is decent at everything, but is decent actually what we want this year? I think the Redmi Note 11 S should have been the list in this year's listing. Check out the video on that smartphone here. Kuidati. I got you guys this time. <laughs>